The purpose of today's lesson is to go over the four types of stoichiometric problems. We're going to go over them from simplest to most difficult. The simplest of the four type is the first type here, mole to mole. It has only one step. We're only going to use one equivalency. And the equivalency we're going to use is number two. The number two I'm referring to is the one I'm circling here, that one. Uh, so let's do a problem like that. Well, here we have a mole to mole problem. Let's say that I have um, 14 moles of oxygen. And according to this chemical reaction, I'd like to know how many moles of carbon dioxide will be produced. I'll start with a given 14 moles of oxygen. And I'm going to use what's called a mole ratio. The mole ratio is this equivalency here, blank moles of A equal blank moles of B. And um, because there's a mole on the left and a mole on the right, when I make a fraction out of it, I'm going to have a mole on the bottom, and I'm going to ha also have a mole on the top. Now, the number that goes before those, that should be in blue, the number that goes before each of those is the coefficient that's in front of um, that particular substance in the balanced chemical reaction. That substance is oxygen, shown here, and there's a 2 in front of the oxygen. In front of the, um, the, the one in question, and the one in question here is the um, carbon dioxide, there is an implied 1. And so you'll see here that the moles of oxygen will cancel, and we'll have a new unit, which would be moles of CO2. Mathematically, we're going to take the 14, and we're going to divide by 2, which is 7. To two significant figures, 7.0. That's our answer. We should have been able to figure that out anyway, because according to the reaction, for every 2 moles of oxygen, I only get 1 mole of carbon dioxide. So if I start with 14, I would only anticipate 7 moles, according to the balanced chemical reaction. That's the simplest type, called a mole-to-mole -mole problem. Now let's bring it back here. Now I'd like to do the next more difficult type, most difficult type, and we're going to try the mole-to-mass problem. It's going to be two steps, and I'm going to use the same equivalency I just used, and then this first one, which I'll circle here. It's going to be two steps, so let's do one like that. Here's our mole to mass. Let's say that I had that 14 moles of oxygen that we had before, and now I want to know how many grams of carbon dioxide will be produced. Well, we'll start with a given, which is 14 moles of O2. And I know it's going to be a two-step problem. Let's go back up to my boxes. You see it's a two-step problem, and I'm going to use the mole ratio first. Now, the mole ratio, well, whenever we use it, will be mole on the bottom and mole on the top. What is the ratio between those two? Well, according to the balanced chemical reaction, let me move it down here a little bit. According to the balanced chemical reaction, I have two moles of oxygen. And the reaction says I will have only one mole of carbon dioxide. So that's my first step. I'm changing colors to signify that I'm no longer talking about oxygen here. I'm now talking about carbon dioxide. So the next ratio I use, come back up here to our boxes. If I need to use number one, I need to use the one right here. Yeah, one mole equals molar mass. I'm going to change it to grams now. So, one mole of carbon dioxide. And I need to know the molar mass of carbon dioxide. Now, that would re require me to add 12, which is carbon's molar mass, to 16, which is oxygen's molar mass. But since there's two, I'm going to have to add 16 twice. And when you add those together, you get 44 grams of carbon dioxide. Now mathematically, you would take 14 divided by 2, which is 7, 
and 7 times 44. 44 times 7 is 308. And that's my answer. So according to my equation, 14 moles of oxygen would yield 308 grams of carbon dioxide. The next type, we refer back to the box, is going to be our mass to mole. It's going to be very similar to the one we just did. It's also going to be two steps, but notice here, my one and my two are reversed. So I'm going to use the top one first, and then I'm going to use the second one. So let's go to the next type of problem. Mass to mole. Let's go to the methane this time. Let's say I have 36 um, grams of methane, and I'd like to know um, how many moles of oxygen will that require? How many moles of oxygen will that require? Let me erase a little bit here so I don't run, in, run into it. So let me write down the given 36 grams of methane. I know this is going to be two steps from the chart. I'm going to use one mole equals a molar mass first. And of course we're going to need grams on the bottom so that they cancel. I need the molar mass of methane. Well carbon weighs 12 and each hydrogen weighs 1. And that is 16 grams. Now I'm going to use my mole ratio. And I'm going to change colors here once again to show that my compounds are changing. On the bottom is going to be my methane, and according to the balanced chemical reaction, there's one methane. That top is going to be what I'm looking for in this problem, and what I'm looking for in this problem is oxygen. Now, how will we figure this out? We have to take 36 divided by 16 times 2. Well, 36 divided by 16 is a little over 2, and um, 2 times 2 is 4, so we're looking at something around 4. Let me take my calculator out to say for sure. So once again, 36 divided by 16 times 2. And yes, I get 4.5 moles of the O2. That's our answer. That is a mass to mole problem. Lastly, the most difficult problem, uh, it's not super difficult, it's just the longest problem, I guess I would say, is my mass to mass problem. It is three steps and it'll be a one, two, and a one. Let's go to this last one. And let's say that um, I got 18 grams of water and I want to know how many grams of oxygen did I start out with. So right down the given, 18 grams of water. We said from the chart this is a three-step problem. We started in this direction. Shannon Flavin to Miss Aguirre's office. Shannon Flavin to Miss Aguirre's office. We said this was a three-step problem from the chart. The equal sign always goes at the end of the conversion factor. Um, we're going to use number one first. The one mole of water over its molar mass, and you should have molar masses, the molar mass of water memorized. It's eighteen. The middle step is going to be the number two equivalency, which is the mole ratio. And on the bottom is going to be what we have. We have water, and there's a two for a coefficient in front of the water. And the top is going to be what we're looking for. What we're looking for in this case is the oxygen. Um, there's a two in front of the oxygen. In the last step, I'm going to use the, the number one equivalency again, uh, one mole equals molar mass. This time, the one mole is going to go on the bottom. And the molar mass of oxygen, which is 32, will go on top. So mathematically, I'm going to take 18 divided by 18 times 2 divided by 2 times 32. And I think you can do the math pretty simply with me. That answer comes out to be 32. 32 grams of oxygen. That makes a lot of sense because 18 grams would be one mole of oxygen. And one mole of oxygen, because it's a two to two ratio, would give me one mole of water. 
And so that's how I would have gotten 18 grams of water because that is its molar mass. Well, those are the four types of chemical reactions.